Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. When do you know it's time to stop ABA? My son is six and has been at it for three and a half years and has done so well that his main problem now is some pronunciation. He goes on to say, just want to say, this is gonna make me cry. I know, I just saw that comment and it made me emotional too. Right, just wanna say that a couple of weeks after my son's diagnosis, I saw an old video of Dr. Grampiche talking about recovery so passionately. I think that that moment changed the course of my son's life. And Amazing. Stephen, that's why we're all here, you know, for that in and of itself. So um, to help and be of support and help people to see, you know, other things. So, um, and thank, and I I'm, with, I'm with you. I thank, you know, Dr. Grampiche changed the course of my son's life too. So, you know, sending you hugs and hearts, uh, I get it. Um, Okay, so, but he is six and has been at uh, ABA for three and a half years, and now he's having some problems with pronunciation, Dr. Grampiche. When do you know it's time to stop ABA? I love that, all of those, and thank you for that comment, Stephen, that is very meaningful to me. Um, I, I don't recommend stopping without having done some assessments. So my, uh, usually when I treat children, I, at the end of therapy, I wanna do some assessments um, and two things happen. Either the assessments tell me, yeah, we're done, or the assessments point to areas that I wasn't aware of that I need to work on with the child. And that's the reason it's important is that if we think, for instance, that right now the only issue is pronunciation, um, we might be overlooking other things, and those other things will later b impact his future development. And, and when a child is done, I want them to be done. Like, I want them to move on and just, you know, uh, live a mainstream, integrated life and not have to have tutoring again in the future. So um, the assessments that I think are important uh, I always conduct a Vineland, a Vineland adaptive behavior scale. I really love the Vineland. It's very easy. It's a questionnaire, but it really helps you kind of uh, identify like little areas that might be behind the norm in adaptive behavior. So all day-to-day -day behavior, and it's important. So that's good. It also has a communication subsection which helps with with how well the individual is communicating but in addition to the Vineland I definitely want to do a, a language test language tests will vary based on the child's age so um, you know typically you're looking at something like a told or a, a very advanced language test which is higher than the age of six I believe is a self c-e-l-f uh, you don't need to go very advanced, but you want to make sure that, no, I'm not talking about just speech, I'm talking about advanced language. So understanding language and being able to describe things correctly and relay information correctly and so on. So a good language test, and you can go with any speech therapist would generally be able to advise on that or a developmental psychologist. And um, let's see, adaptive language. I think you would want to do a social skills test. Uh, there are several, uh, the SSRS, there are a few social skills tests. Any psychologist, again, speech paths as well should be able to advise on which one is appropriate for your child's age. And different countries use different ones. So I want to do a social skills test. And then maybe you want to fill out a test called the brief it's kind of a parent questionnaire there's a teacher version as well and that'll measure more advanced skills like executive functions so you know if you go through and do those and you find that or there's another really good test called the test of pragmatic language topple there's another really good test called the test of problem solving tops those are quick question like they're faster tests to administer to the child and if you do a whole kind of I would usually do that that was my 
kind of battery. I would do a tops, a topple, a language test, a social skills test, and then adaptive. And of course, I always liked to also administer an IQ test annually, just so that I could make sure the child is progressing in all the areas they're supposed to. Um, that's a huge battery of tests. And if you can find a psychologist who can do those tests for you, and you come back and you're like within, uh, you know, one standard deviation of the norm. So about, that's the normal range then you really don't have anything to worry about. Otherwise, if you've come back with certain areas just being you know, more than one standard deviation below the norm, then you want to start to focus on those areas before you stop ABA. And that has helped me hundreds of times with kids where the parents felt like things are finished, but really we still had some areas that we needed to work on. Um, in fact, I think a parent, Christina Adams, in her book, um, About a Boy, is that the name? I always real, get the name wrong. A Real Boy. A Real Boy. Um, she actually talks about this because she came to me and said, uh, I think he's done. And then we did these tests and we came back and said, no, there's a few more things to work on. And we continued working for over a year. And then we were done. And so I think that's really important for you to do as well. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I want to say, Parker, I'm glad to see that you're here because I wasn't sure I have your question and I'm going to ask it in just a second because Parker emailed his in ahead of time. But first, uh, I want to acknowledge, <clears throat> excuse me, Autism Journey with Elijah. I want to say, first of all, what an amazing individual that uh, Dr. Grampy Shea had the opportunity to be a guest on her live Facebook feed a couple of weeks ago, and it was amazing. I just want to say you asked the best questions. I, I, you really felt, did. I mean, it was really kind of amazing. And uh, both of you were amazing, uh, both this parent and Dr. Grampy Shea. want to encourage people, if you get the opportunity to go find it on Facebook, I hope that there is a link to it because it was, what do the young people say? Off the chain? I think that's really old. What's the <laughs> phrase that they say now? It was lit? I don't know. It was amazing. I was inspired by it. So, um, but they have written in a question, um, but then they wrote in something else that I want to say because I think it, it involves this. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we hope to see you there.